Assalamualaikum dear students, it's Dr. Masuma Mehtaab. Welcome to my YouTube channel Medical School. Today we will be discussing about jaundice and type. So let's go. Jaundice is a yellow discoloration of skin and sclera. It is driven from a word icterus that means yellowness. Now bilirubin in this condition the bilirubin is increased that is almost greater than 2.5 mg per deciliter in your plasma. Now what happens, it occurs due to any disturbance in the metabolic pathway of the bilirubin. Now we first have to discuss what is the actual pathway of the bilirubin. So the metabolism of bilirubin includes whenever there is breakdown of RBC, whenever the RBC has completed its lifespan, what will happen, it's eaten up or consumed by macrophages of reticuloendothelial system. Now when macrophage eats up RBCs, we know that RBCs are loaded with hemoglobin. So this hemoglobin is broken down into globin and heme. Globin is restored, however the heme is broken down again to give iron and protoporphyrin. Iron is again reabsorbed, now the remaining thing is protoporphyrin from which the bilirubin is actually derived. But remember, this bilirubin is in the unconjugated form. Now this unconjugated bilirubin is taken up by the albumin and sent to the liver. Now here the liver plays the role. Liver metabolizes it and convert it into conjugated bilirubin with the help of enzyme called uridine glucuronyl transferase UGT. So this is the pictorial representation. Here you can see the hemoglobins which actually release from the RBCs, the heme and this heme is converted into bilirubin. The bilirubin converts it into unconjugated bilirubin with the help of this by bilirubin reductase. Now this unconjugated form is converted into conjugated in the liver with the help of UGT enzyme. Okay. Now what happens next? is this conjugated bilirubin is sent to the gallbladder in the form of bile. Now the bile is released into the gut whenever there is digestion of meat. So this bile is released into the duodenum. So after digestion the bilirubin is converted into urobilinogen with the help of bacterial flora. Now here the bacterial flora, the flora of your gut plays the role it just converts the bilirubin into the urobilinogen. Now again this urobilinogen is oxidizes to become stercobilin. This is the brown pigment which is excreted via the stool. But not all, all of the urobilinogen is converted into stercobilin. Some of it is absorbed and excreted via the urine. And that is about 10% of urobilinogen. Now you can see here this is the conjugated bilirubin that is released into the gut. Here the bacteria converts it into stercobilin and some of it is absorbed in, in and excreted via the kidneys. So let's talk about the types of jaundice. So we have prehepatic, hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice. So prehepatic jaundice when there is excessive extravascular hemolysis of RBCs that is to say when there are a lot of RBCs and those RBCs are hemolyzed due to any other condition any other disease. So what will happen the liver cannot just uh, conjugate this unconjugated bilirubin which is in the massive amount. Say suppose it has ability of the liver has the ability to conjugate bilirubin molecules in just 15 number but if what happens when this 15 uh, it, it can only conjugate 15 molecules of unconjugated bilirubin but what happens when there's 50 molecules so what will happen it overwhelms this condition overwhelms the liver's ability to conjugate bilirubin so now the liver is functioning well but there is other condition like there is extra hemolysis so there is excessive massive hemolysis so liver cannot conjugate properly so what will happen there will be increased unconjugated bilirubin and remember its complication always includes formation of pigmented gallstones now the causes of prehepatic jaundice are hemolytic anemia where we have already discussed there will be extra and excessive vascular uh, hemolysis and then there's Gilbert syndrome now in this condition uh, 
heredity condition now in this condition your ugt that that enzyme which was actually converting your unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated one so in this case what happens UD, ugt is functioning but it's not functioning very very well so that's why there will be elevated unconjugated bilirubin but in this case this is a krigler nager syndrome which is an autosomal recessive condition in this condition there is totally absence of ugt so what will happen the baby uh, after his birth what uh, the uh, if it developed a physiological jaundice, what will happen? Uh, he may die. That is just because the body cannot convert the unconjugated form into conjugated one. The resulting Kernak terrace will occur. Now, the term Kernak terrace is used for irreversible damage to the brain whenever there is bilirubin that is accumulated within the brain. Now, this when this accumulation occurs, the brain is totally damaged. So, this krigler nager syndrome is a fatal condition. Then we have physiological jaundice. We know that almost every baby develops jaundice. That's physiological normal. What happens? Uh, there is UGT, but this enzyme is not functioning very, very well. So, what happens? Uh, this unconjugated bilirubin is going to accumulate in the body of a baby. Or, but one, uh, if it exceeds the normal quantity, what will happen? There can be connectors. Even though in a physiological jaundice, there can be connectors. So the only only treatment you have to give to the patient is the photo therapy. Now this therapy is actually very useful. Uh, in this condition, in this therapy, what will happen? Your unconjugated bilirubin of your baby can be converted into conjugated one. So it's totally useful. So then we have hepatic jaundice. Now there is dysfunctioning of the hepatic cell. Now in this condition, again I repeat, there is dysfunctioning of hepatic cells, which means the liver is not functioning normally. So the liver loses the ability to conjugate bilirubin so there will be increased unconjugated bilirubin but there are there is a condition in which uh, like we have cirrhotic cirrhosis liver is cirrhotic there is compression to the intrahepatic portions of biliary tree and it causes some degree of obstruction when the liver is cirrhosed what will happen the conjugated bilirubin, even though it is produced by the liver, even though in a small quantity, but it is produced by the liver. What will happen? Due to the obstruction and compression, this uh, uh, conjugated bilirubin is actually not released to the bloodstream, into the bile, sorry. Then what will happen? It is released into the bloodstream and causes the jaundice. Now in this case, there is elevated unconjugated as well as conjugated bilirubin. Now the causes includes alcoholic liver disease. If the patient is abusing alcohol for a very long time, then he may develop hepatic jaundice. And then viral hepatitis and then iatrogenic. Now this term is used for the side effects of medications. And then we have hereditary hemochromatosis and autoimmune hepatitis. Now come to the post hepatic jaundice. Now, it occurs due to obstruction to the biliary tract via the gallstones. Now, it increased conjugated bilirubin. Now, in this condition, you can assume that liver is functioning normally. But as the biliary tract is obstructed, so the bile cannot pass to the duodenum. And resulting, what happens? The bile, which is actually producing in the liver, is excreted into the bloodstream. And it's in conjugated form. And when this conjugated bilirubin is elevated that is called as hyperbilirubinemia but in this condition this is conjugated bilirubin okay now the causes of post hepatic jaundice we have intraluminal causes like we have the gallstone or extramural causes such as in pancreatic cancers now one thing i will mention here that jaundice is a sign it's not a disease it's a sign that indicates problem within the liver. It indicates a problem within the biliary tract or pancreas or it indicates any type of anemia mostly which is associated with extra vascular hemolysis. Now the next thing is how the patient will present to you. 
so the patient will have yellow skin and yellow sclera when jaundice is more severe these areas may look brown so there will be yellow color of mucous membrane dark or brown colored urine pale or clay stools and then itching pruritus that is because of increased level of bilirubin so this usually occurs with jaundice so diagnosis after clinical examination you have to go for the lab testing so the lab testing includes lfts you have to go for the liver functioning test and the blood testing for looking uh, any type of anemia and then go for the ultrasounds to look you have to watch the gross appearance of the how exam you have to examine the gross appearance of liver and then mrcp or ercp now these imagining tests are performed just because to see the gall bladder and its tract like biliary tract and the pancreas okay so in lfts you will find bilirubin uh, so bilirubin quantify degree of any suspected jaundice you will find albumin so that is a marker of liver synthesizing function and then ast and alt now these enzymes are released when there is any injury to the hepatocytes so these are the markers of hepatocellular injury and then alkaline phosphatase now these are uh, this uh, enzyme is actually released or increased in other conditions but i have mentioned here that mostly it is raised in biliary obstruction but gamma gt is a more specific for biliary obstruction than alkaline phosphatase however it's not routinely performed so that was all about jaundice i i hope it was useful thank you so much allah